What, after all, is more beautiful than two people together? Stars are falling from her hair. These are based on Etruscan sculpture, which was also done in terracotta. The fact is that the artist, I'm not the only one that said this, always reflects himself, is always himself, no matter what he does. I mean, it might be a female nude figure, but it would still be me. And uh, it's a funny sort of thing. Well, the human figure is infinite in its possibilities. Do you have a specific memory when the human body suddenly struck you as incredibly beautiful? <laughs> yes, well, actually, <laughs> the moment was uh, when my mother took me to the Art Students League. And there was a class for young people at that time on Saturdays. And uh, Ann Goldwaite was a teacher. And my mother took me by the hand, the little boy of 10, and uh, she put, and she enrolled me, and I spent time learning to draw in the prevailing mode at that time. And at this point, a certain point, the teacher she said, "Well, he bawled." She said, uh, "I think you're mature enough, or whatever it would be, to go into the life class." She took me by the hand and took me into the next room where there was a, a huge woman all. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hair and buttocks and everything else, a real Venus. And I was just sort of shocked. I stood there a little stupefied. <laughs> and the woman immediately, she saw me and she said, I have a son at home. I wouldn't think of exposing my body to him. And she walked off <laughs> the platform and Ann Goldwait said, uh, Don't worry about it, we'll get another one. <laughs> The process of converting a terracotta sculpture to a bronze gallery piece occurs at the Shadoni Foundry outside of Santa Fe. Bronze is poured at around 2,000 degrees. Once in the mold and successfully cooled, the shell is removed. Any rough edges are filed down if the piece was cast in multiple parts. They are then welded together. It is polished. And finally, the patina is applied.
I like to look back at art as a continuous evolution. Of all the materials, the least one that's appreciated really is terracotta ceramic. And yet, the terracottas are the things that have lasted through the centuries, from earliest mankind, really. The Incas, the Mayans, the early Chinese, the Egyptians, all started with terracotta statuettes. And they're always the human form. The earliest representation of, of the human form is the, the Venus of Wildendorf, which is a big, fat woman with a huge breast and... Uh, Pear-shaped. Yeah, and it, but it's fascinating. And I believe this is an image that has persisted. On art, we've always used other things as well. I mean, as a landscape and so on. But to me, to a sculptor, the human form is predominant. And after all, sculpture is a physical thing, and one can only represent the intuitive and the uh, undefined things through definite forms and relationships of human beings together. And I have all sorts of nude forms relating interrelating, and every shape. I mean, I have big forms, big human beings, and little ones that blend together into a sort of a symphony of, of the human figure. What do I call it? The aspects of love. <laughs>